When we first started looking at budgets, we said that budgets could be used to motivate staff and management within an organisation. Given a quantifiable set of targets, having budgets should focus management's and staff's attention on achieving the, the targets or objectives that are important to the business. Performance can then be measured against whether or not management, for example, have achieved these targets we have set. So it would appear then that there are significant advantages of having a good budgeting process in place. However, there is a downside. There can be disadvantages linked to having these budgets or targets in place. So in this session, we're just going to briefly think about what are the advantages and disadvantages of having budgets in terms of staff behaviour and also think about how can the disadvantages be overcome. So we've mentioned the advantages and these are really quite common sense anyway, but we'll just note them down. The advantages of having a budget is that it should motivate staff and, of course, management it should focus attention in the right places. So, for example, perhaps sales growth or maybe cost reduction. In addition, it provides a quantifiable performance measure. So it's not subjective. Has someone achieved their target sales figure or not? So this is all good news. What could possibly be the downside or the disadvantages of having our budgets in place in relation to performance measurement. Well, first of all, the disadvantages are, in fact, it may demotivate. So this doesn't seem right. I sound like I'm contradicting myself. A moment ago, I said our budgets should motivate, motivate staff. They've been given a target. They've been given a goal for the year. That must be motivating. But what happens if the target which has been set via our budget is utterly unrealistic? What if our sales units last year were 1,000 units for the year? And your manager says to you, this year I expect you to go out and sell 300,000 units. That sounds like an utterly unobtainable target. So it's going to be extremely demotivating if the budget or the target you've been given at the start of the year, you already know to be impossible. And you know you're not going to achieve it your performance is going to be measured against not achieving it, and you're not going to get any bonus. So our budget may demotivate staff if it is unrealistic. The other disadvantage of having our budget in relation to performance measurement is that it may encourage... or may result in dysfunctional behaviour. And what do I mean by this? Well, let's just say I am the manager for a particular business and we sell two products. And I have been told that my performance is going to be measured against increasing sales for one of those products that perhaps has been underperforming in prior years. 
If I know that my performance is going to be measured against improving the sales of one product and my bonus is going to be linked to that, then what am I perhaps likely to do? Perhaps I will put all my energy into increasing the sales of that one product and completely ignore the sales or the development of the second product because there's no financial benefit to me of spending time on the second product. That is dysfunctional behavior. I'm behaving in a way that's good for me, that's going to maximize my potential bonus, instead of doing, of course, what's best for the company. So, what can we do to get over these disadvantages? How can we ensure that our budget does motivate our staff and doesn't encourage any dysfunctional behaviour? Well, there's a number of things we can do. So, first of all, we need to think about those targets. So, to avoid demotivation, our targets must be challenging and attainable. So, all we are saying here is that when we're setting our targets within the budget at the start of the year, and we want them to be challenging to some extent. We don't want them to be too easy to achieve. We want to push our staff and push our management to be continuously improving the way they do things. However, they have to be attainable, meaning the targets just have to be realistic. If we do this, if it's a realistic but challenging target, then it should motivate our staff and management. The other thing we can consider is our approach to budgeting. The approach we take um, will influence how high the quality of our overall budgeting process is. There are two different approaches, top down. In our top-down approach, senior executives set the strategy and communicate targets down. This makes sense to some extent. Our senior executives are doing the long-term strategy planning for the company. They know what is needed. So it makes sense then that they would communicate this information down the line. However, it's not ideal for it to be a one-way communication process. The other approach is bottom-up. If we incorporate some kind of bottom-up approach to our budget process, then divisional level management and staff are encouraged to have an input. So, it's not just the senior executives then communicating down, this is what needs to happen. They may not understand fully, perhaps, the limitations in the lower level production process, for example. So, as well as our top executives communi communicating down the higher level targets, there is also communication upwards where our divisional level management or more junior staff, perhaps, have an opportunity to communicate up what the issues or constraints are for them. If there's two-way communication in this manner, then the budgets which are set should be realistic, as well as, of course, being challenging.